Counseling Techniques, Narrowing the Focus, with Gina Ko and Sandra Collins. Once counselors and clients have a rich description of the client's challenge and how they would like their lived experiences to be different, it may be important to narrow the focus to a manageable starting place for change. Narrowing the focus enhances client expectancy for change and optimizes their success in moving forward towards the change they envision. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Gina. So last time when we met, we talked about your whole self, bringing your whole self forward. Um, so I've, what I've heard from the last few sessions uh, in terms of the art, the friendships, the advocacy, the writing. Um, is it okay to, to zoom in a little bit, even a little bit more, Sandra, in terms of which area of your life do you feel like you're ready to take action towards this whole selfness? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, Gina, because we have talked about all these different pieces, which has been really good for me in terms of getting a sense of the overall picture. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it does feel a little like that's a lot to tackle. So it would be helpful to narrow it down for me. So I'm thinking that the thing that's sort of sitting in front of me right now um, is my writing, mm -hmm. uh, my current writing. And, you know, it's sort of a priority for me right now. And thinking about how to bring my whole self into that might be a good starting place because it does actually pull on some of these other pieces as well. Okay, okay, yeah. So Sandra, tell me about your your writing process. Like, tell me about how, how, how do you do that? <gasps> well, it depends on if I'm in my whole self or not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing I've been thinking about. Um, yeah. When I'm not coming to this from my whole, to my writing from my whole self, I tend to be a little bit more scattered and I tend to feel like I, you know, I need to go and read about that and read about this and pull them together. And, um, and also I tend to sort of feel like I need to like, just get the task in front of me done. Um, but last week I had a day when I just thought, no, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I've been doing. And I, I took some time to just kind of relax and, um, changed my environment so I wasn't sitting here at my desk but had my computer and I just sat down and wrote a piece that was probably two pages without looking at anything else and I just wrote what I was thinking about and what seemed important for me to say and um, yeah that felt like I was bringing more of myself into it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me in terms of the time with the two pages, how long did you sit for to write that, that the two pages without distractions? Maybe 45 minutes and then I and then I let it sit and then I went back to it another day and maybe edited for half an hour or something. Um, and I think it will take me less time the next time I do that. Mm -hmm. um, because it sort of started to get me into that mode of um, writing. So. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier, you, you did, you tried something different, right? It was something different. So tell me more about that, that decision-making process or how did you ended up trying something different last time? Well, I think it was coming out of us talking about bringing my whole self forward. So I was thinking about that. And I remembered this um, journal article that I wrote, I think it was like 2007 or something. Like it was a long time ago. Um, and I sat in my comfortable chair with my feet up and I dictated the whole journal article. And I just like, I did it in a day, basically just, you know, on and off sitting down. And I just dictated the whole journal article. And I've often reflected on the fact that that's been one of the pieces of writing that people have noted to me or that's received kind of more, more positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
And I, and I think that was at a time when I was probably on sabbatical and I was in a more relaxed space and I was bringing more of my whole self forward in many ways. And um, yeah, so I was thinking about that experience last week and thinking maybe this is what I need to go back to. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking, you know, when something has worked in the past, why not try it again, right? And you, that's exactly what you did. You, you recall the, in 2007, that's what you were able to dive into without over, you said you, sometimes it's when you're scattered, you do this and that and end up. So would it be helpful then, Sandra, in terms of working towards this whole self to dedicate maybe uh, sorry, small, maybe even once a week, a certain time where I'm going to dive in, I'm going to, you know, not look at anything else and, 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 and immerse in, in writing for, let's do the 45 minutes, minutes and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, Gina, because it is, a, I think, about practice. Um, it's building the habit of doing it differently. And also for me, in terms of my um, challenges, in terms of my ability, physical ability. um, That's one of the things I've been processing too and bringing my whole self forward is I need to honor more the fact that it is difficult for me to sit at a computer for extended periods of time. And and going forward, um, sitting with my feet up and sitting outside and um, dictating. This one I typed, but I'd be interesting to try dictating again, which I haven't done in a while. Um, but I that also re, reinforces that wellness and takes some of the strain away from my body. So, oh, yeah. Again, this is what has worked in the past, right? So going back to the dictating, going to another a different environment. So Sandra, what would be, would be a good day for you would it be helpful to set a when we say when we talk about habits like what is the habit is it a Wednesday morning is it a right so what would be a good time for you yeah that's a good question because I've been I've also been trying to block my weeks um Glow and I used to take a personal day every week and so and we had the same day and and the rule of the day was you just go and do your own thing and not for me nothing work related um and Mm -hmm. Um, we don't have to coordinate with each other. It's just our own personal day. So we've started that again, which is good. Um, and scheduling that really works for me so that I know, okay, I'm looking forward to Friday because it's Sounds Friday. lovely. <laughs> and so I like this idea of also scheduling in a free writing day because I can think ahead to what are the sort of themes that I want to work on. And so I'm wondering about maybe um Tuesday as a good day for that because you know Monday I'm often just tidying up things that email that comes in over the weekend or other tasks and then I think I would feel by Tuesday morning like oh I can take the space at this point to just relocate myself dictate something um and kind of build my writing that way Mm -hmm. okay great yeah, so so I ask about which day because again, right? The Tuesday is going to be coming up. How do I prepare for that? What do I need? Do I even need to look out, check the weather? Is it something I can do outside? Right, that preparation does help with with habit forming, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And tomorrow is going to be a nice day. I could sit outside in the morning and I kind of know the pieces that I want to work on, and so I could just you know, pick up on the next one and write whatever feels like needs to be said. Um, and then then go back later and find some reference citations for people's work that I want to recognize in my ideas and that kind of thing. But You know what, Sandra, I might just borrow this <laughs> idea for myself, for writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has worked well for me in the past. And so it's a good... Uh- a good reminder so let's see how it goes yeah and again tomorrow's tuesday i'll try it out